Just a, a basic review of uh, the techniques that we've uh, learned in this class. Obviously all of the materials that we've uh, used together from the brushes, the paints, uh, water palette and the, the watercolor uh, paper. Um, we know first of all that uh, when you're using the watercolor uh, paint you would spray out as much as you feel you're going to use on your palette first. No, and then you would take your brush and uh, <laughs> mix your uh, paint. And you can mix the paint to any strength that you uh, want. The, and you can add water to the color to make it paler. Or you could simply add a smaller quantity of water to the paint to make it um, stronger. So all sorts of different uh, strengths of uh, color. When you're mixing two colors together, um, obviously you have to have the other color on the palette as well. Okay. And you can mix them together like so. And depending on what you want, you can mix a lot of color with uh, another one and modify it seriously or you could mix a really small quantity of color with another color and make it just slightly different, okay? So see those two colors together, how different they look. This one has a touch of yellow. This one has no yellow in it uh, at all. This would still qualify as a red though, okay? The next thing is the uh, wash that we uh, used on so many of our uh, pictures. The yellowish orange wash, one of your favorites. <laughs> okay, and we add some water to that. Always identify the area that the wash is going to um, occupy. So, for that reason, we'll just uh, put in a uh, shape like this here. This is my best attempt at a straight line uh, after uh, coffee. So here's your uh, paper. When you're doing a wash, you always tilt the uh, paper and you start from the top like this, maintaining that puddle as you work your way down to the bottom of the area that the wash is going to occupy. Washes can be strong, washes can be uh, very pale. The easiest washes, of course, are the pale ones because any strokes, any streaks that occur uh, don't show up as much. And when you're uh, mixing color for a wash, it's always good to mix more than enough color. Mm -hmm. um, and that is how you would do your wash. <laughs> okay? Now, one of the other main techniques that is used with uh, watercolor painting is the uh, wet and wet technique. And uh, wet and wet simply means that you're putting color down into an area that is already uh, moistened. Um, so we'll mix a uh, stronger uh, color here. So this is going to be an orange as well. And then we'll take our uh, slightly stained water, should be clear, but anyways. And you uh, fill in that entire area that you're doing your wet and wet in with that uh, water. Now normally the water will sit on the surface of the uh, paper for a short period of time as a result of the sizing which is on the paper. Uh, those of you with sensitive noses have probably found that uh, there was a little bit of a scent uh, that the paper gives off that you must look for me. <laughs> it's, it's actually the paper. Um, is it the sizing on the paper? The, the, the water reacting with the sizing. So this brush uh, here, as you can see, doesn't have a lot of excess uh, water on it. And uh, as a result, when I make a mark through this, it doesn't spread out as much as it would if I took a brush like this with a lot of uh, water on it. And yeah, prove me wrong. <laughs> um, the, the paint would spread out uh, a lot more. And you'd get these explosions as well, which you uh, don't get that much with a brush that's uh, a bit drier. But at any rate, the wet and wet technique is all done on uh, a piece of paper that is horizontal. And then you'll let the uh, paint uh, flow. We'll just stop the video for a few moments.